Here's lesson two on uh, our unit having to do with energy. This is about power and efficiency. And um, we're going to deal with power first, then we're going to deal with efficiency a little bit later. But power and work are very closely related. Um, but they're very different entities, actually. They're, they're, they're related in one way, but, but they actually are different things. Work is the amount of energy that's transferred during an interaction. Power is the rate at which work is done. So power is actually work over time. So it's how much work is being done in, a, in a, an amount of time. Okay, so work is in joules. T is in seconds. Time is in seconds. Power, then, is measured in joules per second. And once again, we give that a derived SI unit, and we call it a watt. And, of course, once you see the unit, oh, watts, okay, I've seen those units before. Probably if, you know, you've been in a grocery store, in a hardware store, and you've purchased a light bulb, um, you would certainly know that light bulbs, that's their main rating, is, of course, in units of watts. And... Um, that really describes how much power that light bulb uh, is going to use. And it's basically work per time. So here's an example. Let's calculate the power developed by a tractor if it does 55,000 joules of work in 1.1 seconds. So what we know is that we've got 55,000 joules 1.1 seconds, and power is simply work over time. So if you take 55,000 and divide by 1.1, we come up with 50,000 watts. So this tractor would have developed a power of 50,000 watts in this time segment of 1.1 seconds. And so we can use significant figures to say 5.0 times 10 to the 4. And so um, really, basically what this gets to is it, it basically talks about how much work is being done in a certain amount of time, and that's the power that's developed by a device. Um, some machine, here an example too, does 48 joules of work. How long would it take the machine to do this work if it had 960 watts of power? Okay, so this is just the same um, formula, but now what we're going to do is we're going to solve for something different. We're going to solve for time. So power is equal to work over time, and we sub in our numbers and rearrange, and we come up with 0 0.05 seconds is the amount of time that it would take this machine to do this work. Okay, so using this is very, very straightforward. Um, it's, it's certainly not a very difficult uh, formula to use, um, but the important thing to know about power is simply conceptually that it's work per unit of time. So it's how much work is being done in a unit of time. So if a light bulb is rated at 100 watts, um, then you would say that that's doing 100 joules of work in every single second that it's, uh, that it's on for. Um, of course, very closely related to power is the term horsepower. You often hear about horsepower when you're talking about cars or trucks or boats, um, certainly commercials um, for big muscle cars talk about how much horsepower they have. Really, the development of the steam engine in the 1700s provided an opportunity to compare you know, what a steam engine, engine could do to the power that... Um, that a horse could do and so that's really where it came from and that you know so if a steam engine was rated at you know 80,000 horsepower or you know 500 horsepower basically people would say holy cow you know that you know this one little engine or this one big engine can do you know all this work because people were very very used to dealing with horses um, because they were really the engines of the time by definition um, one horsepower, and this may seem a little bit odd because these units are very different, but one horsepower is the power that's required to lift 33,000 pounds through one foot in 60 seconds. And so if we were to convert that to SI units, one horsepower is about 746 watts. And really it was James Watt who experimentally observed that 
This is how much work his horse could do, and so he coined the term. <coughs> efficiency is uh, a little bit different than, than power, and efficiency really talks about um, how good something is at converting um, energy from one form to another. So most engines, machines, most light bulbs, tools, um, will take electrical energy and convert it into some type of useful energy. And in the process of that conversion of energy, some energy is transferred to a form that's not useful. So a great example of this is a light bulb. Right? What is a light bulb's primary role in your home? Is to produce light. So it will take electrical energy and it will turn it into radiant energy so that we can see at night. What else do light bulbs create? They also create a lot of heat. And is the primary intention of a light bulb to heat the room? And I think most people would probably say no, it's not intent. That's not the intent. So we would consider that wasted energy. And so light bulbs then, if you look at how much energy goes into them and how much energy is actually used fulfilling their purpose, which is to light the room, their efficiency is very low because most of the energy, most of the electrical energy that goes into a light bulb, even the new really high efficiency light bulbs, most of it is lost to a different form of energy other than light. <clears throat> no machine or device is 100% efficient, just can't happen. But we have a rating system, uh, we call it efficiency, and it's basically used to measure the efficiency of a whole bunch of, to basically anything that, that we, we deem appropriate. And so efficiency is defined as the useful output energy divided by how much energy is going in, which we call the total input energy, and we usually multiply it by 100. So it could be expressed as a decimal, but usually we express efficiency as a percentage. And so let's take a look at an example. Um, a rocket engine contains 3,500 joules of useful chemical energy. The energy output is 490.5 joules. So what's its efficiency? So in the engine, this rocket engine is going to use 3,500 joules of energy. That's how much it's going to use. And the energy output is 490.5 joules. So that's how much energy it takes to get up to a certain height. What's the efficiency of this engine? Well, the useful output energy <clears throat> is 490.5 joules. The engine actually uses 3,500 joules of energy when it burns the chemicals in the, in the engine. So we define efficiency as the useful output divided by the total input, and we multiply it by 100. And if we do this quick calculation, we come up with about 14%. So this rocket engine is only about 14% efficient. And the second question here says, what form does all this lost energy take? About 86%. What form does that energy take? Of course, you may guess. Most of the extra energy is lost to heat. And that's power and efficiency. <clears throat>